When you have poor soil, or you have clay, or you have lots of sun, and you have lots of rain, many times, you know that you need mulch. You know that you need organic matter. You've gotta keep the ground from being bare. You've gotta have a nice place for all of the soil organisms to live. You've gotta keep your roots cool. You've gotta hold in water. You've gotta build humus. And so mulching is the answer. And people will say, okay, why don't you sign up for chip drop? And they'll drop off chips right at your house. That doesn't always work. It depends on how rural you are. It depends on how many other people have tried to sign up for chip drop in your area too. I haven't had any luck getting wood chips for years. Unless I wanna go and get them myself and borrow a trailer and do that whole rigmarole. And it's difficult to do, but I need mulch. So today, for those of you who want to mulch and want that organic matter on top of the soil, but you don't want to spend any money and you can't get wood chips easily, I'm going to give you three options to do it yourself easily. Option number one, which is one of my favorites, is cover cropping. This last fall, I planted a bunch of rye. I also planted clover. And I've been experimenting with either using it to chop and drop right in place and grow plants right into it, and with tilling it under, which is excellent because rye has a ton of organic matter that is released because there's lots and lots, it's a big, big root system. And when you grow clover with it too, you get the additional benefit of nitrogen fixation. What I'm doing too is cutting it and carrying it and putting it in my garden beds. And that's another really good option. It's an excellent cover crop. And that's an annual that you can use anywhere. People ask me why I'm wearing one glove the other day. It's because this is the grabbing hand, this is the cutting hand. It's important. Now there are a lot of different cover crops you can use. You can use warm season cover crops and cool season cover crops. You can use them as green manures, or you can use them and actually get a little bit of a yield out of them and then chop up what's rest, you know, the rest of it and use it on the ground. If you grow mustards and brassica family, you can often improve the soil and chase away some pest issues. 
such as nematodes. They really don't like members of the mustard family. So if you till mustards underneath, or even if you just chop them and lay them on top of the ground and let them rot down, that's supposed to help with nematode issues, which is great if you live in the hot sandy south. If you wanna add nitrogen to the soil, you could grow beans and peas, chickpeas, lentils. You can grow uh, sun hemp. You can even grow pigeon peas if you want more of a longer term perennial in the tropics. So there's a lot of stuff that you could throw down there to fix nitrogen. Um, you could put all kinds of legumes. Remember uh, George Washington Carver with his peanuts, right? So you're gonna cycle those in between. Some of these things you're gonna just cut and drop on the ground. Some of them you might till under. Depends on what you want to do. If you've got an empty space and it's bare ground, you don't have mulch, grow something on it. Keep that ground covered, chop it and drop it, or till it under so you can get the benefit of that organic material. Now another thing I love is to grow perennial plants that I could chop down and right in my rows or in my food forest or in my yard that I can chop and drop again and again and again every time they grow back. Sometimes it could be something that you consider an invasive. You got like a mosa tree in your yard or a black locust or something like that. You could chop it and let it grow back and chop it again and let it grow back and chop it again and keep using that new growth to drop on the ground to use as mulch, to use to feed the soil, to cover the soil, to fix nitrogen, to drop extra material there. So that tree is pulling up all kinds of minerals with its roots. You are harvesting all of its hard work and feeding it to something that you love. So in my rows, I've actually got this happening in these grocery row gardens with varieties like Tithonia diversifolia, and I have cannas, which have edible flowers. And I, some, somebody said, Morag Gamble said she uses cannas. Morag, you're stealing all my good material. I mean, come on, Morag. I was doing this for like years. No, I mean, everybody has figured this out. If it grows fast and you can chop it and drop it on the ground, do it. Cannas are fantastic. They grow back over and over again, and if you let them grow, they're really pretty. You can eat the flowers, you can eat the roots. It's like a multi-purpose plant. Most people just think of it as a pretty flower, but hey, it's a very useful pretty flower. you could do is really take the low effort approach and rake up leaves in your yard. I rake up leaves all the time. My beds are full of leaves that I raked up in the fall. When that fall drop comes, that is free mulch. Don't go carry it out to the curb. Don't burn it in big piles. Instead, use it to mulch your vegetables. As it rots down, it's going to feed the soil. And the leaves of most trees rot down just fine. Some of them take longer than others. I mean, pine needles take a long time. Oak leaves could take a long time. Maple leaves are really fast. Sweet gum leaves are fast. Some are faster, some are slower. If you get a big mix of leaves and you just keep throwing them on there, they'll all rot down eventually. And they're going to bring different nutrients to the table. And there's gonna be, some of them are just gonna act like cover for a long time. Some of them are gonna rot down fast and feed the soil. So you don't need to buy a chipper. You don't even need to get a big load of wood chips. If you can get it, that's great. I love them, but there are options. You could pretty much grow your own mulch or just harvest it in the wild if you want to do it. The larger the gardens, the more you're probably going to have to rely on cover crops because it gets harder and harder to get enough mulch dropped at your property to even do it or to spread that much. It's, it's actually way easier to sow seeds and then chop and drop a cover crop than it is to get big, big piles of mulch dropped and have to spread all that stuff. This spring and summer, I'm going to experiment with a new crop, a new cover crop which is a sorghum sedan grass hybrid. I got a sack of seed from it. I'm gonna just sow it everywhere because it's 12 foot grass. That's the kind of thing you want. Something that gets real big, makes a lot of biomass. Hey, I got my grains that grew through the winter and my clovers. Coming out of the summer, I can grow some gigantic biomass grass and cut it and drop it. I will have all the mulch I need. You just kind of got to think from season to season, what can I put in the ground that I can use to feed everything else in my garden and build the soil up as I go. Because with soil like this, we need all the help we can get. 
Thanks for joining me. Be sure to check out my book, Compost Everything, The Good Guide to Extreme Composting, along with my other books. They are in the link below this video. And go out and uh, figure out what you could scavenge. There's probably something on your own property that you can use already. And there's certainly something you can grow. Maybe seeds that are already in your pantry. Thanks for joining me. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. I buried my rabbit beneath the cherry tree One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again On a fruit salad spoon That's true. He's sleeping sleep. Oh, yeah. That works. Um, getting Let's go. Let's go.